Well, another year has come and gone, and you know what that means. It's time for my top 10 movies of 2017 that I saw. That is very important. I cannot rate a movie that I did not see, and I don't have time to see every single movie out there. Also, please keep in mind this list is purely based on my own personal opinion and nothing else. It is entirely possible, and in fact quite likely, that it will not agree 100% with your personal opinion. Because as you may have noticed, the human race is not a hive mind. That movie you really like might not be on my list. That movie you really hate might be on my list. Please come to terms with that now, or get. So without any further ado, here are my top 10 movies of 2017. Number 10, Wonder Woman. Thanks to director Patty Jenkins, the fourth time is a charm for DC. Gal Gadot gave us a great performance as a strong and compassionate superhero that we can all look up to. Elena Anaya was a pretty compelling villain. The No Man's Land sequence was awesome. And we finally got a DC superhero movie that isn't afraid to have fun and has honest to God color. It probably would have been a little bit higher on my list had it had a stronger third act, but it's still a solid film. Number nine, Logan. This was a very different look at the X-Men universe and certainly not your typical superhero movie. More like a superhero movie made by Sam Peckinpah. It's definitely dark and gritty and violent as hell, but it still has a lot of heart underneath all that. Daphne Keene as X-23 was quite the little badass and if this is indeed the swan song for Hugh Jackman and Sir Patrick Stewart, they definitely went out on a high note. Number eight, The Shape of Water. A love story between a mute woman and the creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't know how Guillermo del Toro comes up with this shit, but I am so glad he does. This story of social outcasts and a rather unconventional romance was beautifully done. And Sally Hawkins absolutely killed it with her performance, which is rather remarkable considering she had to go through almost the entire film without saying one word. Well, out loud. Number seven, Coco. It's certainly not surprising that Pixar made another good movie, but Coco may go down as one of their best ever. This is an incredibly charming story about the importance of family and remembering who came before you. The animation is gorgeous. The music is so well done, and it's a very respectful look at Mexican culture with an almost all Latino cast. And if you don't think representation matters, just look at how well this movie did in Mexico. Number six, The Big Sick. Rom-coms are not normally my thing, but I was totally won over by this semi-autobiographical story of Kumail Nanjiani and Emily V. Gordon's relationship, and the way Kumail interacts with both his family and hers. Sometimes funny, sometimes heartbreaking, and it's got charm to spare. And I'm glad Kumail and Emily finally got to tell their story. Number five, Thor Ragnarok. I really was not expecting to see a story about the plight of refugees and coming to terms with your country's ugly colonial past in a superhero movie, but here we are. And I love what Taika Waititi did here. He managed to tackle some very serious themes while at the same time being irreverent as all hell, and I enjoyed it tremendously. It had some great performances from the old guard and the new. Blanchett especially made an amazing villain. And it had a killer soundtrack to boot. Easily the best Thor movie and one of the best in the MCU. Number four, The Disaster Artist. Based on Greg Sestero's autobiographical story of the making of one of the best worst movies ever, the Franco brothers did something truly great here. This was a fascinating look into not just the production of The Room, which was every bit the train wreck you would expect, but also into the mind of one of the most bizarre personalities in Hollywood history. And that is saying something. And I've said before that I did not think James Franco was the right person to play Tommy Wiseau, but man, did he prove me wrong. He was great. Number three, Dunkirk. This was definitely the best theater going experience I had this year, seeing this movie in IMAX and just being enveloped in the action. Nolan gave us a visual masterpiece with his story of helplessness and retreat which is not the approach that war movie directors usually take. 
It's almost like a horror movie in some respects, with the Nazi army as this unseen monster that's surrounding and closing in on our heroes. And it was fascinating to see how everyone, soldier and civilian, reacted in the face of such adversity. Mark Rylance especially was fantastic, as usual. Number two, Get Out. This is certainly not what I expected from a man mostly known for sketch comedy, but Jordan Peele gave us one of the greatest horror movies I have ever seen. This had some genuinely creepy moments, and occasionally some genuinely funny moments. It's always nice to see a comedy sidekick that's not annoying. Daniel Kaluuya's performance was incredible. And the film has some pretty good commentary on racism, especially regarding people who can't recognize their own racism. I don't know what Peele is going to do next, but I'm looking forward to it. And my number one movie of 2017, Star Wars The Last Jedi. And if that surprises you, you don't know me at all. This movie was not at all what I expected, and that's what I loved about it. Rian Johnson managed to tell a new Star Wars story that was unpredictable and unusually nuanced. I love the interactions between Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver. Mark Hamill gave probably the best performance of his career. Carrie Fisher's final performance was excellent. And I really dug the movie's themes of learning from your failures and not putting your heroes on a pedestal. I don't expect this to win Best Picture or anything, I'll be amazed if it's even nominated, but I can honestly say I did not enjoy any movie this year more than I enjoyed The Last Jedi. And you may now all proceed to post your hate-filled comments below. Oh yes, there they are. Hmm, that was quick. And as The Last Jedi taught us, everything must be in balance. Where there is light, there must also be darkness. Where there is a top 10, there must also be a bottom 10. Next time.